and hello there YouTube, this is DIY Electronics, and today I got a new video camera, thank god, it's um, it is the Lifecam HD 5000, um, supposedly it's supposed to shoot in um, 720p, um, it's an HD widescreen video camera, I got it for 38 bucks. Found it on sale, so I was like, sweet. So hopefully this will help you guys um, see my videos clear and uh, understand what the heck I'm doing. I'm also going to be trying to use some different tactics for uh, displaying information. Um, one of the things is a new software that I got for the webcam. So I can actually um, move the webcam without actually having to move it and uh, I can focus in and bring out and you know zoom in zoom out that kind of stuff um, alright on topic what we're going to be covering today is the the 741 CN op amp and we're going to be covering the um, inverting aspects of it um, a lot of people, you know, know about op amps, but they really don't know how to use them. It's just a basic, basic introduction to op amps. Um, one of the problems I had when I was younger messing around with these is I didn't know what the hell they did. I wanted to figure out how they worked, but um, there was just no really basic information out there. So um, this right here is going to give you the basics, and uh, it's a very minimal part list. Uh, the only four things we're going to need today is a 741CN op amp. Um, you can use other ones. Um, there are many other options, but I'm sticking to the 741C. It's an older version. Um, some of the new ones are better timing and uh, faster switching, but you know that doesn't matter. Um, for what we're doing today, it doesn't matter how fast it switches. Um, the next part you're going to need is a um, 2K resistor, um, preferably a 1%, but a 10% um, a, a tolerance works just fine. Um, op amps are very precise, they're very um, predictable, and, the, and external components determine how it operates. So the more precise um, external components you can get the more predictable your results will be and the closer to ideal circuit you'll have um, the next part you'll need is a 1k resistor um, so so far we have the 741CN op amp a 2k resistor and a 1k resistor the next thing is a 10k potentiometer um, Preferably, if you had a precision 15 turn little blue guy like one of these up here, um, one of these right here would be the optimal one that you would want to use. But like I said, I'm trying to make this as um, easy to do and um, for some of the basic people, um, parts that I'm using are readily available and most people should have them in their little collection by now anyways um, some of the, this right here is our circuit diagram and um, so our four parts will be a 741CN op amp a 1K resistor, a 2K resistor and a 10K potentiometer again you can use precise components um, but I'm showing you with um, you know your standard off-the-shelf 10% resistors and uh, you know uh, very rough uh, potentiometer. Um, our circuit here we got on the screen. Let me go ahead and show you. This right here is going to be our 1K resistor. Alright, and this right here is going to be our 2K. Okay. 
and of course this is our 741CN op amp. Alright, so what else you need for this project, which is what majority of people have the problem with, is a power supply that will give you a negative voltage. Um, the one I'm using right here is a uh, old ATX power supply. Um, this is one of my old power supplies, but as you can see, I got my 12 volts positive, and I got negative 12 volts, negative 12 volts, 12 volt positive. Um, you know, I got negative 5 volts, I got 5 volts, I got negative 3 volts, and I got or negative 3.3 volts and also got positive 3.3 volts. That's why I love these old power supplies. Um, so you're going to need a power supply that can supply a negative and positive voltage. Um, I'm not going to cover that in this video. I'm thinking about doing it later on, but for now, do some research and figure out how to make one. Alright, um, so let's actually get started here and understanding what are we doing. Alright, well this is an inverting op-amp setup that we got here. What that means is whatever voltage we apply here is going to be inverted here. And depending on our gain that we get from these two resistors, right there, will determine what happens to that output voltage. So let's say that our gain is um, a 1 to 1. So we're not going to gain anything. If we inputted 1 volt here, we would get a negative 1 volt here, if we have precision components. Otherwise, we're going to be off a little bit over here, up or down. Um, how we figure out our voltage out is pretty simple. This little formula here is how we figure that out. So a negative RF divided by RI times VI. What that means is our resistor in, which again is that 1K resistor, and then our resistor, our feedback resistor here, which is RF, which is 2K. So it's 2K divide, negative 2K divided by 1K, which equals 2, or negative 2. All right, and then times our voltage in. So if our voltage in is 1 volt, our voltage out will be 1 times negative 2. So our V out will be negative 2 volts. Pretty simple. Um, like I said, this is just basic. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of theory on it because there's plenty of articles out there on theory and you could spend days lecturing on theory. Um, so let's actually just go into the, this is the basic setup. So this webcam still cannot get as close to the circuit as I want. I mean, I can, but I have to actually physically move the webcam. And um, it would it, it would be hard to get set back up to the way I want it. So I, that's the circuit there. I know you can't see it. So let's jump over here. This is how the circuit's set up. And this little notch right there is the notch on the IC which determines where pin 1 is, which pin 1 is directly below it when it's facing to the left. So, pin 1 is going to be not connected. Pin 4 is also not actually, I'm sorry, pin 4 is actually going to be connected to uh, Never mind. I totally just messed up. Um, yeah, totally. All right. So pin four is going to be connected to our negative voltage. 
I don't know why. I thought the negative was over here, and there was an extra tension. Never mind. Okay. Um, so our negative voltage is going to be supplied here, and I'm using a negative 12 volts, which is going here, and I'm using my positive volt, 12 volts going here. Um, pin 5 is not going to be connected and pin 8 is not going to be connected. So 1, 5, and 8 aren't going to be connected to anything. Um, what you are going to do is take your potentiometer and you're going to connect one of the legs, preferably the left leg, to your negative power supply. So negative 12 volts. That ain't gonna work. Okay, so connect that to negative 12 volts. Connect the right leg to positive 12 volts or 5 volts or whatever power supply you're using. And then connect the center pin of the potentiometer or the wiper arm to our resistor in, which is the 1K resistor. 1K. And it's going to be connected to pin 2 of the IC. And then between pin 2 and pin 6 we're going to put our RF resistor which is 2K which is 2K, there we go. And then we got our 1K over here and our 10K pot there. And then our 741CN off amp there. And that's all the parts you need. It's a very, very, very basic, simple setup. Um, let's actually look at it in action. Um, so, go ahead and zoom out there for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the power supply on and make sure everything's connected the way it should be. Um, Alright, and I'm going to put my meter on the VN side, right in between the resistor and potentiometer, right there. And we're going to see what the voltage is. And I should have it set at... What the heck? Okay. Now this is the hard part, because with these rough course or whatever potentiometers you want to call them, they're, uh, they're hard to adjust. If you had a nice 15k or 15 turn precision pot, that would be a lot better. So I'm going to try to get this right on 2 volts. Okay. And there we go. So we're right on 2 volts at our input. And that, again, is right there, before the resistor, before RI. So now we're going to take our little meter, and we're going to put it over here on pin 7. And we're going to see what our output voltage is, which, for some reason, is not what it should be. Actually, because I didn't put it on the output. I meant pin 6. I'm sorry. Okay. So, as you can see there, we have negative 4.12 volts on the output. So, what happened here in this little circuit is it gained 2 volts, or, I'm sorry, it in gained 2 volts and inverted the voltage. Um, there's better ways to say that, but that works. Um, and that's the basics. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with these things. Um, there's more configurations than just the inverting. Um, but this is a way to, you know, get started with one and, um, play around with it. Um, there's also a lot of rules with these um, saturation wise you you can't um, 
you can't create voltage that's not there. Um, so you can't use this op amp to create a thousand volts if you you know if you apply one volt and have a thousand gain um, it'll saturate and um, you could possibly burn up the IC with too much current um, these ICs use very little current and they can only source or sink very little current um, each IC is different um, you'll look at the data sheets, of course, but never go below 1k on your input. Always keep a 1k resistor or higher. Um, I use these. I don't know why. I should have used like a a 10k and maybe a 100k resistor for this instead of a. Um, well, actually, that would have been a 10. Anyways a 10 and a 20 instead of a 1 and 1000 and 2000 um, but you can play around with it and uh, see what you can do and what this is nice is if you have a low or a, a sensor or something that you're using in a Adreno project or some other project you can take that sensor and if it outputs a very low voltage you can take that low voltage and turn it into a higher voltage so it's easier to um, uh, understand what's going on with it and that is it um, I hope this video was a little easier to follow um, I'm still trying to get the hang of looking at the screen and um, you know not actually at the whiteboard and drawing on there but I think this little setup is nice because I can control you know the zoom and focus on different things and the camera seems to be a lot better um, just to give you a close-up on this since the video is over see if I can bring you down there and actually see how good the, the circuit will pick up so that is the circuit um, let me remove this and that is how I have it set up pretty simple Alright, well, appreciate it. Thanks for watching.